everybody and welcome to the next edition of our PHP Corner, a look into HTML and CSS. Now this is going to be a very quick crash course into HTML and CSS. The idea is to just give you some background, some understanding of what HTML and CSS are, how they're used inside your browser. I'm going to include a brief example of an HTML document that you can take a look at from my blog at shariframadan.com slash phpcorner. And if you take a look at today's uh, edition, you'll see a link to the HTML example. Here is a very quick view of HTML. This is what an HTML document basically looks like. As you can see, we start with an HTML opening tag and an HTML closing tag inside of that our uh, head tag and a body tag. Now these tags or elements uh, are usually found in pairs. Some of them can actually uh, be just one tag to compose an entire element. But Most of the time when the element has an opening and closing tag we can place other tags or text or even comments inside of them. Basically what this document does is it's the most basic fundamental building block of a web page. It tells the browser how to compose this page for the user to view uh, inside of their browser window. So the way that you can think of this is if you had a box and you placed another box inside of that box and then you took yet another box and placed it inside of that box or a number of smaller boxes that you would place inside that box. What you end up with is this sort of structured hierarchical type of um, document, a way to compose things, so that when we look at them, uh, we can break them up into their individual pieces, but they're still well contained within that particular structure. So for example, we have the opening HTML tag at the top and the closing HTML tag at the bottom. Everything inside of the document is enclosed within this element, this HTML element. Similarly, we have these other two elements here, the head and body elements. And inside of those, yet uh, more elements like the paragraph tag or the image tag. So if we take a, a quick look at some history and um, origins just to get an idea of how HTML started, how it's shaping up, and what it's looking like uh, for the future, you'll notice that from the Wikipedia page I uh, pulled the blob here on Tim Berners-Lee specifying the HTML and the first browser and server software back in the 1990s. The idea was to be able to share documents across the internet and it wasn't really a very easy uh, thing to do back then because when you think about it you know what is a document really if you for example store a word document in a rich text format that can only be read by a particular uh, text editor or word processor then you would have to have that software installed on your computer in order to be able to read it uh, but to transport it back and forth across the web between different computers it wasn't guaranteed that everybody would have that type of word processor well when you think about the browser it sort of is this processor that interprets the HTML which is a uniform uh, markup language that we're able to share uh, and all the browsers pretty much implement a specification for it. It started as version 2.0 back in 1995 uh, and then going all the way up to 4.0 in 1999. Now a few years ago back in 2008 we started the first draft for HTML5. It hasn't been finalized yet but it's presenting a lot of uh, new and better ways to be able to create these visual, audible, interactive web pages inside the browser because as you'll notice more and more users are actually spending more and more time inside of their browser, so it makes sense to improve on this and to make it better. If you take a look at some uh, of the different parts that make up HTML, like its elements, for example, we know that they're determined by tags, so these elements they are commonly found in pairs, and they start with the opening tag and closing tag. Uh, some of these elements are not necessarily paired, as we noticed before with the image tag, for example. And if we take a look at some of the things that can go inside of that particular tag, we can actually have one or more attributes, and these attributes um, are placed within the angle brackets that enclose that tag. 
So for example, you can have a source identifying which picture you would like this image to load, this image element in the HTML to load. Uh, additionally, or similarly, you can have many other attributes such as a style attribute uh, or other attributes that fit particular elements. Some are common, some are not. And if we take a look at uh, how you can actually put comments into HTML, it's very similar like in a lot of programming languages, you have to delimit the comment within a tag. And in the case of HTML, it happens to be the angle bracket, exclamation mark, dash, dash, and then the comment followed by dash, dash, and the closing angle bracket. So if you put these comments inside of your HTML, they're not, uh, you know, they're not rendered or they're not affecting the browser reading the HTML. Uh, they're just sort of ignored. And they, they allow you to do just like similar you'll see in programming languages. They allow us to uh, have the author place some amount of information that might be necessary or important to this particular document, although they're not very popular or widely used in HTML in particular. In any case, if you do want to actually place um, these angle brackets inside of the um, content of your page, for example, since they're reserved, we have what are called HTML entities. And so since some of these characters actually are reserved specifically for uh, HTML, we have to encode them differently. And so that way they can appear on the page, even though they're actually encoded a little differently when we write them in HTML. And we'll be taking a look at that in the example just a little bit later on. All right, so uh, taking a look at CSS, if we compare, you know, what is the relevance between HTML and CSS and why do we need them? Why should we learn about them? Well, they're, they're very important when we're developing web content. They're very important when we're producing a web page because we want that web page to show up inside of the user's browser uh, the way that we expect it to show up. And so we know that HTML is a declarative domain specific language. And when we looked at in the first tutorial, you know, the difference between uh, PHP as a programming language compared to other programming languages, we touched on the fact that there are domain specific programming languages, and then there are general purpose language. Uh, PHP is a general purpose language, whereas HTML is domain specific because it's particularly used here for this very specific purpose, which is the markup. And there are other forms of markup as well, such as the XML specification, which is commonly referred to as XHTML, for example. Um, there's SGML, or the Standard Generalization Markup Language. These markup languages really intend to do a very specific thing, and to be able to allow us to transport these documents across the internet or across the web um, in an effective way that we can parse and be able to derive information from them. So this, this parsing that's going on, it's really determining the composition, but not necessarily the orientation of the page. And what we mean by that is, for example, you can have a paragraph tag, but that doesn't really tell the browser you know, what font size it should use for that paragraph tag. It doesn't really tell it how much spacing should be between lines, for example, inside the paragraph tag, or how much spacing to put around the paragraph itself, how to indent that paragraph, whether to show that paragraph in the center of the page, or starting from the left fold or right fold. These are things that we don't necessarily get directly from HTML. Uh, even though they, they are attributes in HTML that in the past have been used to specify a way to create some orientation. But really, when we separated the content uh, or the composition of that content from its presentation, from its layout, we came up with CSS, which is a cascading style sheet that allows us to tell the browser how to actually render these different HTML elements inside of your browser. So that way we can sort of keep the composition congruent as it is within the tags that are used to define these elements and, and the way that we look at these different elements by using CSS. So CSS can actually dramatically change how your web page appears in the browser without actually changing any of the HTML. Alright, so we're going to be taking a look in the browser at an actual example of HTML and CSS and how we can use that to deliver the content of the web page to the user's browser. This is an example of an HTML document uh, that I wrote. If you take a look at it in a text editor, it looks just like this. I'm looking at it in Google Chrome's browser. 
and by viewing the source of the HTML document which is located on my blog at shariframadan.com slash examples slash HTML you can see this is pretty much the uh, HTML that we're using to generate this document and so these HTML elements that you see in purple here like the HTML head link body div all these things compose the page that ends up looking like this in the browser so we don't end up actually seeing any of these HTML tags in our browser but we do see the text and the content that's rendered from these uh, from this HTML so basically what we'd like to do is take something that's plain and boring like this and turn it into something that looks very lively and exciting like this and the way that we do that is by using cascading style sheets which is the CSS that we discussed so if you want to take a look at the source code in your browser for example if you're using Google Chrome like me uh, you can do that by right clicking uh, inside of the browser window and clicking on view page source now what you'll notice immediately is that the HTML itself has not changed if I switched between the two where you see this and this you'll see that the HTML for both pages is exactly identical nothing has actually changed the only thing that has changed is one of these pages actually loads this CSS style sheet or this cascading style sheet and this is exactly what the style sheet contains it basically tells the browser how to render this particular page to make it look like this instead of the plain and boring this and to give you an idea of what this would end up looking like in different browsers uh, for example I'm using Google Chrome here and this is what it would look like in Opera this is what it would look like in Safari this is what it would look like in Firefox and this is what it would look like in Internet Explorer 9 now, unfortunately for those folks that are looking at this in Internet Explorer 9 it probably looks a little bit different than it does um, in a Mozilla or WebKit, WebKit based browser for example but uh, that's primarily due to the fact that I really didn't take the time to make this XHTML compliant and um, try to get certain elements to work in Internet Explorer the same way that they work in Mozilla it just turns out that these different browsers actually do end up rendering HTML and CSS just slightly differently uh, based on uh, the engine that they use to generate the uh, content but more or less you get the idea and it is the same the idea is to get the content delivered to the user in their browser uh, from your server and that's exactly what we're going to be learning to do with HTML, CSS and hopefully a little JavaScript along the way uh, but that's just to give you a basic idea now if you want to go ahead and play around with some of the um, CSS uh, style sheets to learn a little bit more I would recommend going to cssgarden.com and here it pretty much gives you the same idea this is an HTML document the HTML document itself is used over and over again with different style sheets to create different effects so for example if we click on the link to the right there this is the same exact HTML, it's the same content, it's just using a different style sheet to give a completely different presentation. Let me take a look at another one for example, again still the same uh, HTML, just a different CSS file that's used to completely change the presentation of the content here inside the browser. And you know, there, there are a lot of them. So you can take a look there and uh, play around. I'd also recommend taking a look at W3 dot uh, org which is the W3 or the World Wide Web Consortium basically and uh, this is the uh, World Wide Web's international standardization uh, where you can find information on the spec of HTML and things like CSS things like that so this is a very good um, now, resource to use. This concludes yet another edition of the PHP Corner. I'd like to thank everyone for watching and I hope you tune in to the next tutorial where we'll be taking a crash course into JavaScript and how that will be used on the client side to help us when we're developing uh, using PHP.